Hello, my name is Fiona Forsyth. I'm a board member for the advisory board of the Caston Centre for Human Rights Law. Uh, I've been in Geneva and attended the 39th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. And I attended in order to observe the proceedings in relation to the presentation of the fact-finding mission on Myanmar. So this is a report back to the centre about the goings-on of the proceedings in the 39th session. So by way of background, uh, the, the fact-finding mission was established pursuant to a Human Rights Council resolution. And the mandate, I'll read out the mandate for you, was to establish the facts and circumstances of the alleged recent human rights violations by military and security forces and abuses in Myanmar, in particular in Rakhine State, with a view to ensuring full accountability for perpetrators and justice for victims. So the fact finding mission was established and it went forth and conducted its mission and presented a number of oral updates and interim reports. But the final report, which is more than 400 pages long, was presented this week. Now, one issue which the fact-finding mission uh, had to deal with was the lack of cooperation by the government of Myanmar. And the mission was in fact denied in-country access and so had to conduct its analysis by reason of uh, uh, interviews of displaced persons and documents and photographs and videos. So uh, the report was presented to the HRC yesterday by the fact-finding mission at the 39th session. The team chairman, uh, when he presented the report, said this. He said, with a heavy heart and deep sadness, we have drawn conclusions on the basis of the facts that we never expected would be as grave as they are. What we have found are not only the most serious human rights violations, but crimes of the highest order under international law. So it's pretty powerful stuff. He went on to speak of the horrors that had occurred in relation to the Rohingya, the 725,000 people who were forced to flee to nearby Bangladesh. He described crimes that shock the human conscience. And what's detailed in the report are mass killings, murders, rapes of women and girls, burning of entire villages. It's absolutely shocking uh, what has taken place. And this conduct is described as being at the hands of the Myanmar military, the Tatmadaw, who are described also as carrying out these well-planned attacks, targeting civilians and using sexual violence, all with impunity. So as well as detailing facts, the report of course contains a series of recommendations and these include mechanisms for accountability, uh, the Security Council referring the situation to the ICC or creating an ad hoc international criminal tribunal. Interestingly, the ICC recently made a ruling in relation to uh, the fact that it had jurisdiction uh, over the deportation of Rohingya to Bangladesh. So that's a side issue, but it's something also to keep an eye on in relation to how things proceed with the ICC. But in relation to practical issues, the report also stressed that the repatriation of refugees and the return of internally displaced persons must be safe, voluntary and dignified. And in the current circumstances, it was stated that this is simply not possible. Now, I'm not going to go into any more detail about the report. It's available online. There's also a summary online. But what I thought might be more interesting is to talk about uh, what took place in the debate uh, at the United Nations. So the debate was quite interesting. Myanmar, because it was the country concerned, was provided with the first opportunity to respond. And uh, unsurprisingly, it rejected uh, the findings of the report. What Myanmar said was that the report was misleading. It encouraged disunity. Myanmar criticized the methodology, saying that the information only came from interviews with displaced persons and human rights groups. Myanmar spoke of a one-sided perception of Myanmar history and it said that retribution would lead only to further polarisation of communities. Now other members of the council were then given a chance to make their statements and I'm happy to say that the majority uh, of uh, those states welcomed the report, they condemned the conduct and they spoke of a need to take action. So there really was uh, a fairly consistent voice coming out of the council yesterday. 
There was particular focus on uh, concerns about sexual violence and the safety of women and children. And uh, most states spoke of the need for accountability and they supported at least some of the recommendations, including referral to the ICC. The uh, states that are part of the Organisation of Islamic Cooperation also spoke strongly about discrimination of the Rohingyas based on faith. So that was also uh, an interesting aspect. But there were two states uh, that stood out with a very different sort of a response, and that was China and Russia. Now, China, there was, it was more about what they didn't say than what they actually said. Uh, what China said was that uh, they, they spoke of respecting Myanmar's sovereignty and the need for dialogue and consultation. And they described Myanmar's history and the current situation as, as complicated. They said they would provide constructive assistance, but they, they really did fall short of condemning Myanmar's conduct or supporting the report of the recommendations. Russia was slightly more overt in its rejection of the report. Uh, Russia said the information was based only on a single type of source. They said uh, Myanmar's history was a direct consequence of the inhumane colonial policy of the British Empire, which created a time bomb. And they expressed support for Myanmar and Bangladesh trying to resolve this matter together. So they really were the two standout different uh, opinions and different voices in the council. But the uh, representatives of the mission were also given an opportunity to respond and their main response really was to the criticisms that came from uh, China and Russia, although not expressly said to be so. In relation to the need for dialogue, uh, they said there had been dialogue for the last 20 years, the time for dialogue was over and more action was needed. In relation to criticisms about limited sources, uh, the mission referred to the efforts they've made to verify testimony and the use of physical markings, photos, videos, satellite photos, uh, and forensic and military experts to really verify and ensure the accuracy um, of the material that they were dealing with. So the, uh, the mission also stressed that while they welcomed the ICC's ruling on jurisdiction, there was a need for a much more comprehensive approach on the question of accountability. And I think this was really to try and, and push uh, the states into, into action. Uh, and also, interestingly, there was quite a focus by the mission on the issue of hate speech. In their view, the, it was the proliferation of hate speech in Myanmar that in fact facilitated the conduct of the Tatmadaw and, and, and that humanitarian disaster that followed. And, and I think what was trying to be the message that was trying to be um, carried forward was that this is a lesson for all states that uh, the existence of hate speech can really foster an environment where human rights abuses can occur much more easily. So look, it was really good to see um, Australia joining in with the countries that welcomed the report and its findings um, and the cause for action. However, the Human Rights Law Centre also uh, made a NGO statement and they noted that unlike some states, Australia had not supported all of the FFM recommendations. Um, and there was also the comment made by the Human Rights Law Centre that Australia sent Rohingyas to offshore detention uh, when they were fleeing the very conduct that Australia was now condemning in the HRC. So again, that was an opportunity for uh, Australia's conduct to be put uh, really front and centre on the international stage. So that was interesting as well. So what's going to happen next? It's a little bit unclear. The ICC prosecutor yesterday announced she was launching a preliminary investigation into the deportation of the Rohingyas. So that's some development. What happens at the level of the uh, Security Council will also be interesting, particularly given the attitudes expressed by China and Russia in the Human Rights Council. But I think that the most powerful comments came from uh, Christopher Dominic Sadotti, who was a member of the fact-finding mission, and he made some closing remarks. And one of the things he said was, for the Tatmadaw, time's up. So let's hope that's the case, and let's hope that some positive action can be undertaken. We'll all have to keep watching uh, how this progresses with interest. Thank you.